So, what about that octopus traveler? What about that, huh? So, Square Enix really likes to do this thing with a lot of these styles of games where they release a demo that just straight up is the beginning of the game, essentially. And then you can transfer that save data to the full game when it comes out. And the full game comes out in a few weeks' time on the 24th. I might potentially be getting it a little bit late because I ordered the special edition and we'll see how long that takes to get in. But yeah, because of the way they handle their demos, don't think of this like a demo, but think of it like the actual real beginning of the playthrough of it on this channel, because it basically is, you know, and we'll play the rest of it proper when it comes out and stuff. I really, really, really liked Octopath Traveler 1. It was the first really long game that I ever covered on this channel when that released back in 2018. We had done, like, some short playthroughs back then, but Octopath Traveler, when I played that, that was the first long playthrough that we did around here. That was, like, 70-plus parts. I used to do a weird thing where if something wasn't that relevant, I would call it part, like, 2.1, for example. So there were point parts, so the finale part is, like, part 50, but really, in the playlist, is like, 70-plus parts. Um... And it seems like there's a new thing revolving the Somnia as well. Interesting. So there was just a Nintendo Direct earlier today that announced a bunch of things, including this demo, which, you know, they like to release after thing revolves. Yep, voice is English. Brightness. Yeah, that should be good. I've been tuning into the soundtrack of this game. Like, the things that they've released already previous for. They haven't released any full themes. They've released, like, little snippets, essentially. About a minute long of several different themes, including all eight of the characters' themes. And it's amazing so far. Like, it's really darn cool. And you can also use the pool car and sables to build support. Oh, that sounds interesting there. Yeah, so we'll probably stream some more Fire Emblem later tonight if there's new stuff added to that as well. Thank you for downloading the Octopath Traveler 2 demo. A few things to know before you set out on your journey. In this demo, you can play for three hours from the start of the game as recorded in your game saved file. Oh, wait, it's not just like one chapter? It's just three hours? If I cut these up into roughly half an hour parts, and that means that we got like six parts worth of content, uh, you can choose any of the eight protagonists, just as in the full version of the game. You'll also be able to carry over your save data and use it in the full game. Traveling, travel beyond the starring areas will be restricted, but you are free to explore that corner of the realm to your heart's content. Three hours is probably enough time to finish a chapter one, right? Assuming this works progression-wise like the original Octopath Traveler. Right? Maybe? But yeah, anyway, I'm hyped for this game. I love Octopath Traveler 1. We did cover a little bit of Champions on the con of the Continent on the channel. Champions of the Continent being the Octopath Traveler mobile app. Like, but we didn't get super far because I don't really like covering mobile apps. Because, you know, they're, well, freemium games. Because they're like, oh, if you really want to get strong, like, pay us monies and stuff. And uh, I was intrigued by some aspects of the story. But it was wonky to cover. My software that let me stream it to my computer isn't even working anymore. So... Will we cover some more Champions of the Continent on the channel? Maybe, but it's probably less likely to happen than it is, if I'm going to be honest. So, we might be done with Champions of the Continent, and we're moving right into Octopath Traveler 2. We have also covered some other HG2D games on this channel, namely Live Alive last year, which was, a, uh, which was an HG2D remake of the 1994 JRPG that served as, like, the biggest inspiration for Octopath Traveler. If there wasn't any Live Alive, there wouldn't have been any Octopath Traveler. And if there wasn't any Live Alive, we wouldn't have had the now iconic theme Megalovania. Because the reason that Toby Fox had made Megalovania for that, like, uh, Earthbound Halloween hack or whatever it was forever ago, was because he wasn't able to use Megalovania from a Live Alive, if I recall there. So that's pretty darn cool there. And we also played Triangle Strategy, and I really like Triangle Strategy. That was a fun time. I'm going to have to adjust the volume here a little bit on OBS because it looks a little bit sketchy. It seems a little bit loud right now. So let me just adjust that. So in terms of like the HD 2D series on this channel, we've gone Octopath Traveler, Triangle Strategy, A Smidge of Champions of the Constant, Live Alive. No, and then it was Live Alive, then A Smidge of Champions of the Constant. And now this. So this is the fifth HD 2D game that we'll have covered on the channel and the third game within Octopath. In case anyone's interested in, like, the overall HD2D series on this channel, or just, like, the Octopath series, that's the journey so far around here. Triangle Strategy was a masterpiece of storytelling, you're hyped, so you're hyped for the story for this. It was really cool there. The, uh, the way that the story went in the original Octopath Traveler, though, was that the eight different stories were very disconnected from each other. Like, it was very much eight individual stories that you, like, progressed onward. Some of them were pretty meh, some of them were alright, some of them were really cool. I really like Cyrus's and Ophelia's. They were probably my favorite of the original Octopath Traveler. Those were pretty darn neat. Um, and one of the changes that it seems like they've made for Octopath Traveler 2 is actually having the stories be more interconnected. 
Because in the original, even though you had, like, all your characters in one party, they never interacted with one another. It was as if they weren't even there and they were doing their stories on, like, a completely individual basis, you know, <laughs> was the case. Whereas Square Enix was like, okay, yeah, we realized that people weren't that big a fan of that. So let's actually have, like, side plots where the characters are against you know one another and there's side quests that involve, like, multiple characters and stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that, uh, how that plays out. I love that Octopath tune there. Change time? What do you mean, change time? I'm so confused, just in case you want to hear a fun sound effect. Oh! 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 Okay, it's not just a fun sound effect. Um, I think there's only one last thing that I need to note before starting this. The original Octopath Traveler playthrough on this channel, one, because it was in 2018, like the early days of my channel, it was like really cringe, my audio quality was really bad. And the UI for like the characters, like HP and SP I believe it is, is on this side of the screen. Like it's like, here's one, here's the beginning of two, and then three and four moving down. So, what? That forced its way out. I, uh, I fueled up on a quick granola bar before starting this because we just streamed the direct for a few hours and I haven't eaten in a while. Um, so, across things like this, I didn't even have both these layouts at the time. I think I just had something like this. But I didn't really have a good place to put the camera without blocking something or without putting it on the other side and mirroring it. So I just did the whole playthrough with my camera off. It's like one of the few playthroughs on this channel that just has like camera off. And looking back at it, it's kind of weird like that. I'm going to leave camera on for this playthrough. It's a lot more of what we do around here nowadays as opposed to like early days of the channel where it's like, oh, just free flow and brand new channel. We're figuring it out. Um, oh, I can change time here too even. And if it blocks something... It sucks to suck and block something, I guess, you know, <laughs> is the, uh, is the case. Um, so, okay, so you have to press A to see them. I just want to have a quick look-see here. Apothecary Casti. Path action day inquire. Obtain information from townspeople talent. Concoct. Use information, use materials to craft healing and hazardous compounds. Now, each, uh, character had path actions in the original Octopath. In this game, it seems like that comes back, but they also have a different action based on, like, day to night. Your name is Casti Florence, and you are an apothecary. Your tale begins in a port town of the Harborlands. Discovered adrift at sea, you awoke to the realization that you could not recall your own name. The only clues to your identity are your satchel and skills as an apothecary. I need to rediscover who I am, and there's something else. Something important I'm forgetting. Unable to ignore the nagging feeling within you, you embark on a journey to recover what you lost. I pre- Oh, pressing B does that! What the heck? I just wanna- Oh. Oh, I can just hover over here. Um, Warrior Hikari. Path action day. Challenge. Engage in battle with townspeople. Just like old Rick Eisen. Talent. Learn skills. Wait, talent? It's... Wait. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, it's just empty for a bunch of people. Maybe it'll show what that is in the full game? I don't know. Learn skills, master skills during challenges, and use them in battle. Your name is Hikari. You are a warrior. Your tale begins in the desert region of Hinoeuma. You are you are the younger prince of Ku, a nation ever at war, and a worry and worry for your people who have suffered greatly from the ceaseless battles. I pray for a world without conflict, without bloodshed. Hoping to bring priests to your nation, you strike out on a journey for your like-minded allies. I'm honestly not sure who I'm gonna be starting with yet, so hopefully as I hover over them, I'll get a good idea. This guy I found really intriguing as we've uh, as I've seen trailers and stuff like that, and like his general look gives me the vibes of uh, Elvis from Bravely Default too. Um, purchase during the day. Obtain items from townspeople. Talent. Business partners. Leverage your hired helper's talents to get a host of benefits. So he's the new merchant. The new trusted here. Your name is Partito Yellowill, and you are a merchant. Your tale begins in the vast wastes of the wildlands. After witnessing the rise and fall of the pioneer town you call home, you set your gaze upon the horizon. I'll be back once I eliminate that devil called poverty from the world. With dreams of bringing prosperity to all, you embark on a journey with only the scent of commerce to guide you. It's also worth noting that if this works like Octopath Traveler 1, who we choose as, like, our first character might be locked in as, like, our main character that we always have to have in slot 1 for, like, the rest of the main playthrough. Hopefully that's one of the things they changed, but just in case, it's worth keeping it in mind. Uh, welcome back to Steam Back from Your Workplace, so what you missed, there was a few announcements of some interesting things, including the uh, Octopath Traveler 2 demo, which is out right now with save data that'll transfer to the full game, so we're starting Octopath Traveler 2 right now! I wasn't expecting to do that today. Um, Path Action Day, Dancer Agnia. 
that lure bring townspeople wherever you might go. So the new Primrose here. It's the same eight classes, but very different characters. Talent, dance session. Dance with an allured companion to trigger various effects. Your name is Agnia Bristarni, and you are a dancer. Your tale begins in the verdant region of the Leaflets. Though a tavern dancer in a small village, you have big dreams of the future. I'm going to become a star and bring peace to people's faces. Bring smiles to people's faces. I don't know where I got peace from. Just like Mama. With hope in your heart and spring in your step, you you, uh, you begin your journey to stardom. She seems a lot more upbeat and fun and stuff. A lot more so than uh, Primrose, who was like, Murder! Kill! I will do everything I need to do to get revenge on my father's kill. I like Primrose, though. Primrose is cool. Uh, Hunter, Hunter O check. Path action day. Provoke, engage in battle with townspeople. Talent. Capture slash prepare. Prepare captured beasts and turn them into items. So yeah, kind of a return of how Hunter worked in uh, Octopath Traveler 1 slash Bravely Default 2. Very similar ideas there. My name is Ochet, and you are a hunter. Your tale begins on the Isle of Totohaha alongside your fellow Beastlings. Despite your troubles with the human islanders, you live a carefree life. That is, until the Fire Nation attacked. Uh, until you learn of an encroaching calamity known as Calamity Ganon. Uh, as the Knight of the Scarlet Moon. Alright, Master Juva, I'll do it. I'll find those creatures of legend and bring them back. Desperate to save your home, you set sail in search of those who can help. She's also one of the characters that intrigues me a decent bit from what I've seen in trailers, because it seems like if you have her, you get a companion of either an owl or a fox there, and that's cool! You know? It's cool as heck. It's, we're not gonna pretend it's not. No, I guess my camera block's part of the art here. Thief Throne, however the heck that's pronounced. Path action day. Steal, obtain items from townspeople. Um, talent, blessing of darkness, grants all allies augmented effects at night. Name is Throne uh, Anguus, and you are a thief. Your tale begins in a thrilling city in the Brightlands. You're a member of the Black Snakes, a thieves' guild that controls the city in the shadows. Your job is to steal and clean. Not again. Not this stench. Every time I breathe it in, it feels as though my very lungs are rotting. Stench of blood. Determined to escape the cycle of bloodshed, you embark on a journey for the keys to your freedom. In the Octopath Traveler 1, we did start out with the thief as our very first hero there, being Therion. And <laughs> there is a big bit of drama that Therion's voice actor got into, interestingly enough, after the uh, after we had completed that playthrough. Um, Therion's voice actor, if I recall the story here, was the same voice actor who initially voiced Byleth in uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, who turned out to be so much of a bad person that they literally included a patch in Fire Emblem Three Houses to get him replaced. They brought in a new voice actor for Byleth after the game had already shipped to redo all the lines and patch the new voice in. So, uh, yeah, fun fact about the voice actor of the thief from the last game. Um, so there's that. <laughs> Claire Temenos, Path Action Day Guide. Bring townspeople wherever you may go. Tell them, Moonlight, Judgment, inflict all foes with enfeebling effects at night. My name is Temenos Mistral, and you are a cleric. Your tale begins in the mountainous region of the Crestlands. Though easygoing in your duties as Inquisitor, oh, I'm part of me is almost tempted to start with this to make Spanish Inquisition jokes. That all changes the day a tragic incident takes place in the church. Oh dear, I suppose it can't be helped. After all, doubt is what I do. <laughs> yeah, it's tempting. Um, sensing that there is much more to the incident than meets the eye, you set out to solve the mystery left in its way. Become terrible, the terrible Spanish Inquisition. And then the scholar here, the scholar in Octopath Traveler was Cyrus, who was all about, like, ah, knowledge, and, like, share knowledge with everybody. But this guy, Oswald, he is the one in search of revenge. He is the dark one. Scholar Oswald. Oswald? I don't know. Path action, day, scrutinize, obtain information from townspeople. Talent, study foe, gain insight into a foe's weak point at the start of battle. That, yeah, that is helpful and could definitely help us throughout the playthrough a decent bit. Name is Oswald V. Vanstein, and you are a scholar. Your tale begins in the snow-soaked reaches of the Winterlands. I am curious to hear, like, the full winter theme in uh, this. Again, I've only heard, like, the few, like, one-minute snippets that they've released thus far. You have been sentenced to life in prison for murdering your wife and daughter, and have since spent 1,879 days locked within a frigid cell. Harvey, the man who took everything from me, shall die by my hand. I swear it. Not even the bitter cold can extinguish the raging fire in your breast, and so you set out to exact your revenge. So likely falsely convicted, I would guess, or some sort of weird situation where he was kind of forced into it. Maybe it's like a Bayek Assassin's Creed Origins situation with his uh, family there. So, in terms of, like, who I'm leaning towards starting out here, I am intrigued by you 
like from what I've seen in trailers of this character, like you don't have your memory and a lot of people treat you not so well being like, oh, you're part of them. You're so awful. And you're just like, what the heck? I lost my memory. Who? I, I don't know what the heck is going on. I'm intrigued by you. I'm intrigued by you as well. You also give me vibes of like Noah from Xenoblade 3 <laughs> in, terms of your, uh, in terms of your look there. And you seem pretty cool and stuff. You as well. You get like a owl and fox. That's cool. You know? So you might be like a fun mainstay in the party, but I don't know if you'll be like the strongest plot to start this out with, you know? This dude, though, because I'm intrigued by his plot and him being like all, uh, all in wanting revenge. <laughs> this guy for the Inquisition. If he's part of the, uh, if he's an Inquisitor, if he's part of the Inquisition. Oh, the potential for Spanish Inquisition jokes. Huh, if I had known that I was going to, uh, you know, be streaming this today already, I would have probably come to a proper decision. But as is, I cannot, you know. Who would be, like, for sure useful throughout the whole playthrough? Like, because the reason why I'm not leaning towards you as much as I kind of like you is because it's like, okay... If you're locked into my main slot, that might actually screw me a little bit. Like, I don't know how important the merchant would be to have around. A much more useful one might be, uh, might well be... Wait, Apothecary's, like, item healing, so that might not actually be all that helpful, you know? Okay, so let's say, let's say you're out of the picture there. Warrior could be, like, a pretty good one for damage. Hunter could be a pretty good one as well for, like, not half bad damage, plus being able to, like, capture monsters as we go on and stuff, you know? Imagine if it was as broken as in Bravely Default 2 with the, uh, what was it called? Creature Comforts that had, like, infinite stacking. Um, healing with just, you know, magic there would be something that would undoubtedly be useful throughout the entire playthrough. And you can't go wrong with just, like, regular magic, though. You know, might have to dig into SP for that. So, most useful would probably be, like, one of you three, right? Hmm. We want to start out with a serious tale. I'm sorry I've taken so long to decide, but if we're starting out with, like, a serious tale, that's probably the best way to, like, start out a playthrough and, you know, create, like, a hook and be like, huh, what's going on here? So because of that, I'm thinking that this might actually make sense, right? Pray for a world without conflict, without bloodshed. Because I'm intrigued by that. I think I might actually do it. During early trailers that I saw with, like, the creature companions, I was originally thinking about, like, starting with Ochet, but how about we do this? We can probably recruit them in any order, I would imagine. Are you praying, Hikari? Is there an auto-advance in this game? Doesn't seem like- Oh, wait. L R. Oh. Don't waste your breath. If you're going to pray. Hold on. How do I? What? That's not voice. No! 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 Stop! No! Did I fast forward it? Gave their lives on the altar of our mission. Oh crap! Hold on. Let's rewatch this cutscene after I figure out how these controls work. Okay, so that's. Oh gosh, dang it! That's fast forward. There's play. It's time, my prince. Oh gosh, dang it! So does it auto advance by default? Then let's join the if it's set on play? Okay, it does. <laughs> We're off to a great start here. Well, that's different. That's uh that's different there. Well, now I know. Now I know at least. So set it to the play and then it'll auto advance. Okay. And fast forward is just like not even super duper fast, but without the voice, and you can pause it and... Okay. Okay. Acquire the sire. Try wear all these thing robobs. Loading system data. We have three hours! We gotta make good use of it here. Let's go! Let's do it! So will it be on play by default? Maybe? It's not on play by default. 
so how do I? Okay, so it's on pause by default. If you're going to pray, pray for the ones fighting for their lives, not those already in the dirt. I didn't come here to pray. I came here to remember. To remember the friends who gave their lives on the altar of our mission. <clears throat> Today, I fight for them. It's time, my prince. Then let's join the fray, Mitsu. Whoa, it just moves the camera right- Whoa! Okay, that was a heck of a transition. Move characters select category, path action, main menu, confirm, select. Okay, cancel dash. Hold B while moving to dash, but beware of your chance of encountering enemies is higher while dashing. What, there'll be random encounters around here? <laughs> or, uh, or what now? Okay. Don't soil your britches, Igati. Okay, it's not auto advancing there. <laughs> My name will be remembered by history. I'll etch it upon the heavens themselves. Ooh, the music so far. I will die in a hellhole like this. Well said, Mitsu. Let us press on for the glory of Ku. Do the voices sound quiet compared to the music? It seems like this. Yeah, so the thing where Bob's are there, so uh. Attack your foe's weak point to lower their shield points. Reduce shield points to zero to break your foe. Gara can use both souls and pull arms to reveal enemy weak points. Select attack and that to choose a weapon. Yeah, so it seems like the audio leveling could be better than breaking enemies. Yeah, I know about that. So yeah, my camera's fine here. And if it stays like this, then maybe we can fit all four or at least three. I don't know. Okay, so. Yeah, weak to swords. Breaking and boost mode. I know how this works. Yep. Yeah, R is enter boost mode. Potency your attacks will go up. Spend BP. Yep. Yeah. Expanding on, like, a, or doing a different version of the system for some ploy by Bravely Default. As the original Octopath did. Okay. And then, we can say, get some big damage there. Like that. And then, yeah, I can do L to go down. Wow, they made it really flashy in this one, huh? Nice. Music's pretty cool, though. Untouched and bonus break. Healing Grape. Neat. We keep on moving, or is it cutscene? It's cutscene. Alright, at least it stays on play now. I don't have to reset it each cutscene. At least there's that. Ooh, he looks powerful. Prince Hikari's display has put the fear of death to me. Now for the finishing touch. Our time. of Ku's fiercest soldiers rise and rise. Become the tempest and scatter their sudden dogs to the winds. The sun shall wait for the time of storm and follow in their wake and scour the earth. But when the fury of the storm subsides, our enemy will be somewhere Strategy is always the dog. Your keen eyes see the battlefield as none other evil of you. May you have luck on the battlefield. Luck has no place here. Only strength reigns supreme. And the mighty shall build their castles upon the corpses of the weak.
Okay, genuine question. Why does nobody know how the hell to level their audio in a modern video game? Like, genuinely. I... <laughs> I, I really want to know. It... <laughs> Oh, I should have opened the menu and seen if I could turn up the voices. This is what I should have done. Dang it. I meant to do that and I forgot. What? Is it not on play anymore? What? It's, it won't let me pull up the thing. Do I just press A? I, I guess I just press A here? It's just a short thing anyway. Steal yourself. As, at least the music's cool as heck so far. It sucks that the voices are quieter than the music. Oh, hi! Now I'm okay. But yeah, I assume that our Dudo, from his description there, kind of wants to avoid, like, combat and find peace. Because it kind of sounds like he comes from the side of the bad guys. Alright, so yeah, three things can fit, at least. So once we get a party of four... Like, maybe it's just the last person's SP will be blocked with this layout. That's fine, right? I think. Okay, so... Let's just do that. How about... Ouch. And then... Ow, that's fine. So you only have pole arms. Why do you bet you're weak to them? Yep, cool. So in that case, we can do this. Like that. And then... Ouch. How about we do this? And then... Just to map it out. Yeah, you're weak to that as well. While we're attacking you there anyway. And then we do this. For some good smackaroos. And then... This guy's back in. Alright. Not really any damage on my dudo, though. They're targeting those guys more, which is handy for me, I suppose. Smack. Alright. Get on out of here. Neat. They're leveling up too. Because they're totally going to be important party members that I'm sure we totally keep. No doubt about that. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure their level ups matter a whole lot, you know? <laughs> Your fate was sealed the moment you stood against us. Is it... Can I... I cannot select the thing for auto... I guess I'm pressing just A then. Mitsu, wait. Further bloodshed. We got it. Ah, here we are. It's the enemy general. Now to prove your metal to come. Hmm. I shall honor the memory of my fallen allies. My blade will not waver. Now you pay the price for your tyranny. Bastard of Kuh. It's time to finish this. Come. The sands are actually yeah, this music is definitely really good. Okay. So, these dudos over here are almost... There's no way they're not weak to this, right? For opening tutorial stuff? Yeah. I kind of figured so. Ouch. It's fine tutorial stuff for the beginning. It's my turn. So we can go ahead and do this. And take away your opportunity for your next attack. And then say... I don't know. Just get a poke here. So we can both things. What do you bet that's that guy's two weaknesses there? What do you bet? Maybe. Gonna do the sweep again? Oh, single attack there. Okay. And then we do this to get you out of here. Nice. Smack. Go after the boss last, as is the video game rules. Go after them last. Um, I am realizing that my camera can potentially block some party members like this. Yeah. Kind of weird situation what led to me uh, having camera off for Dr. Beth Traveler 1 playthrough. I could do it like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet or something like that, where I shrink the game a little bit and have my camera on the outsides, kind of like we had with Octopath Traveler Champions of the Continent, which, you know, I had to do anyway because it wasn't a full... 16 by 9 being a phone screen after all was the case but 
you know, would there be enough stuff that I could populate the uh, outside area with that would warrant, you know, doing that? Or would the only reason be just to not have my camera blocking things? I don't know. Maybe something that I'll think about <laughs> from now and uh, the full game releasing. Between these times, you know, maybe what I'll end up doing. All right, yeah, just hold on to that BP for now. Ouch. My turn. And then we do this to break. Like that. And get some good damage. And then we do that. Okay. My turn. Be nice if I could, uh. Wait. Use skills learned during challenges. So I only have this right now. Hachimon Manji Giri. Unleash a moderately powerful sword attack on a single foe. How's this? Okay. Yeah. For the pride of Koo. That works. Well, level three. Not quite level four. Energizing pomegranate. No pomegranates. Ooh, the new victory theme. I should have listened to it more. Over. Oh, now it's auto advancing. No. We won't. We won't leave the desert in your clutches. The accursed clan must be. Sympathy to the enemy, and you tarnish the name Ku in the process. The enemy general is slain. Victory is ours! Your Majesty... The day's glory was paid for with the blood of many. But victory is ever an occasion for celebration, Mugen Hikari. Our enemies have been put to heel, their forces crushed under our might. The nation of Ku shall know prosperity untold. Your Majesty. Hikari, I tire of this heat. Brother. Was the enemy general speaking of? He called us the accursed clan. Is it true? Are we meeting? Put it out of your mind. A half blood like you needn't worry about such things. Can you hear it too? My voice? Hmm. General Mugen. Go with glory. It was your sword that cut the path to victory. You fought fiercely this day. What is your name? It's Ritsu Mishuyo, my lord. Compassion has no place in Ku Hikari, and you are unfit to stand among us. <laughs> <laughs> 